Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me, Zug. So it has been a while since we've um, tinkered around with any builds as Darktide has kind of evened out a bit, which is nice. We're not having the continuous updates and things changing and it's, you know, we're at a nice level now. There is going to be an update coming soon, but we're in a decent spot where I think it's time to um, do the compendiums, a collection of builds and weapon sets that I use for each class and character. So as you can see today we're starting off with the Psyker. As uh, I have had a build in the back pocket for this for a while and I would be meaning to release it but I thought we'll release it with the compendium. So let's take a look shall we? So we'll jump into it. I'll go through um, all of the builds that I use for each character. So these videos are going to be slightly longer than usual because we're going through four or five builds for each character. So, we'll start with the first one, and this is a Surge Staff build. Now, I cannot guarantee the worthiness of the first three, because they are works in progress, and with how things have kept changing, you know, it's, it, they're good, but they're not quite meta good. So we'll start off anyway. So as you can see, we're taking basically everything up the top apart from metal. We're taking Smite with Lightning Storm. We're not taking Enfeeble on this because with pug groups, they don't usually take advantage of it. So we're not bothering. But we are taking Lightning Storm so it jumps more. And as you can see, we are taking Perilous Combustion and Wildfire down into Kinetic Presence for the 5% increased damage against elites. One with the warp, a venting shriek, becalming eruption, creeping flames. Of course, we're taking warp rider and all the way down to warp battery. Now warp siphon is basically just a stacking um, damage, buff, uh, damage buff for you. And generally, you're just going to be zapping things as much as you can. Very simple build. Venting Shriek is just there to save you when you get over 100. As you can see, press F to survive. And it's all good. Quite a high damage build. And if things start getting sketchy in the group, you switch over to Smite. Lock everything down for your team. And they should... I say should deal with it for you. But that's not always how it happens. But as you can see, the damage isn't too bad. This is on damnation. And oh, his legs exploded. Yeah. Pretty, pretty standard surge build. Now, before we jump onto the other ones, we're going to have a quick talk about stims to use with this. And uh, honestly, if you're playing on damnation at Uruk, the only stims you really want to be looking at is the health stim or the damage stim, which is denoted by the skull or the no Nurgle no. The other two, they're not great. So you use the damage stim for basically an oh crap button. You stim yourself with it and you take down whatever is threatening the group. Or you've got yourself the healing stim, which is just general purpose healing on the go for you or a teammate in need. Remember, you can use these on your team. Right, let's move on to the next one. This one, again, is another smite build. I'm not going to go through how all of these play, just because you don't need to. But as you can see, smite into press um, psionics. It's all right. I would say it's not quite as good as the last build, but you know, that's just how they are. These are test builds, by the way. So the first one is a general purpose surge staff build with Smite. That is working. So if you wanted to use it, go for it. It's, it's tried and tested. This works. These two, not so much. But I will show them off in case you wanted to look at them. But they're not great. 
So I would highly recommend trying them at your own risk. Now, before we jump into the other builds, I am going to quickly go through weapons and stuff that are being used. So, throughout all of these builds, I'll use one or two of the same swords. Mostly I'm using the Demios Mark IV Blaze Force Sword with Flak, Unarmored, Slaughter and Uncanny Strikes. This thing will tear through anything. It is considered the single target version because it's of its... Um, because of its charged attack. So you see, you got yourself a lovely, lovely crusher. Not doing much. Use that. Aim for the head. And when you fully charge it up with running county strikes and slaughterer, you should be able to one or two shot. But as you can see, even without using its charged ability, you can knock them about quite nicely. Which is why I tend to favour the Demius over the Ilias. But we'll go through them. So as you can see, this is how I've built the Demius. And then we've got the Dueling Sword. The Mark IV is my favourite. I've gone for Maniac and Crit on it with Shred and Uncanny Strikes. This thing is a crit machine. You don't get the charged attack on this, but you do get a little riposte jab. But its heavy attack, again, is absolutely brilliant for dealing with anything heavy, because as you can see, huge amounts of damage if you just aim for the weak spots. They're very, very good. The only reason I don't use these so much anymore because you can't vent, um, not heat, you can't vent perils, sorry, while you're using it. And then we've got the Ilias. I've got a couple of versions of this I'll go through, and both of them work very, very well. It's just depending on what your taste of sword is. So weak spot with, with Maniac damage, Shred and Blazing Spirit. And as you can see, enemy gains four stacks of Soul Blaze on critical hit to a, mac a maximum stack of 12, which is why we're going with Shred for the stacking crit. And this is just going to be helping you spread Soul Blaze all over the place. Or we can go with uh, just the pure damage version. Again, we've gone for melee damage elites, unarmored, just to help us cleave through trash with uncanny strikes and Shred. Shred works really, really well on the Elias. Uh, it's a very fast sword. You're going to stack that crit up very, very quickly. But yeah, this is how I build the melee weapons. I don't tend to use anything else, really. I don't tend to use the chain sword. It's either the four swords or the Mark IV dueling sword. And it's the Mark IV dueling sword because of the damage and the attack pattern. The other swords are good, but the attack patterns are a bit weird on them. So I would highly suggest the Mark IV. Right, let's have a quick look at the staves. So I'm going to go through what I'm using on these. Just a quick overview on all of them. So we've got the Rift Haven Purchase Test 4 staff with crit, damage to elite, warp nexus and warp flurry. Then we've got the void strike staff. I have two flavors of this. With infested enemies, crit, warp nexus and surge shot. This is the crit version for trying to proc Surge. And then we've got the standard just damage version, which has got Flak, Maniac, Warp Nexus, and Warp Flurry. This is your all-purpose. This is your crit. And then we've got the Surge staff that I was just using with Unyielding, Crit, Warp Nexus, and Warp Flurry. And then we have another Purge Test staff with Unarmored, Flak, Warp Nexus, and Warp Flurry. As you can see, the only difference between those two is really the crit. And then the others are just kind of tester staffs that I don't use particularly much. As you can see, Warp Nexus failed me on this one. It was almost a perfect roll. But yeah, that's the staffs I've been using. So, Curios, last but not least. So the ones I'm using at the moment, I am actually, I've gone back to using a wound because the Psyker is incredibly squishy. This does just give you that little bit of leeway because I'm a very good player. I'm not a perfect player. Not every single mission is going to be played flawlessly. You know, we all lose focus. We all don't see that maniac in the crowd, whatever. 
On every other class, I don't use a wound. On the Psyker, occasionally I do. And as you can see here, it's got a wound, toughness, combat ability regeneration, and toughness regeneration. And then the other ones I'm using are basically the same. Health with max health, combat ability regeneration, toughness regeneration, and then max health, combat ability regeneration, toughness regeneration, and toughness. And I do have a few others which are just more of the same, just for switching in and out as needed. These are older ones that I was using for damage resistance. Don't use those so much anymore. I tend to go for full survivability and uh, damage output with the combat ability regeneration. Helps a lot when you're using Venting Shriek. All right, and now we're on to the builds that I have been using most of the time with the Psyker. So we are, this is a purge test build, as you can see. And this is kind of how it works. We take most of the stuff up here. We are leaving out warp expenditure and toughness. We're taking brain rupture. This is Psyker classic. Okay, this is exactly how the Psyker played before all of the updates. And it's why I've kind of gone back to it. It, it feels familiar to me. And we're taking Brain Rupture with Kinetic Resonance and Kinetic Flare. Using your combat ability makes your Brain Rupture charge 75% faster and generate 50% less perils. And then we are going for Kinetic Flare, which just allows you to Brain Rupture anything inside of a horde while you're laying down that covering fire with the Flame Staff. Of course, we're taking Wildfire and Perilous Combustion here because we want the Soul Blaze all over the place. And then we're taking Psychonetics Aura into Seer's Presence, taking Empathic Evasion, one of the warp, down into Venting Shriek, becoming Eruption, Creeping Flames, into Warp Rider, and into Empowered Psionics. So we're taking Empowered Psionics with this because we want to be using Brain Burst or sniping anything that isn't going to come down with the Rift Haven Staff. So give a little example so you've got yourself a nice big mixed horde the staff is going to deal with most anything in there but you think oh there's a mutant in there brain rupture and you just pop whatever you want and if you want to empower brain rupture press f charges faster does more damage and every time you kill an elite or a special, you get a stack of empowered psionics, which increase the damage of your brain rupture. As you can see, even if you expend a charge to kill something, if it's an elite, it will give you back a charge. So that's basically your single target, and then you come back into the flame staff and you deal with entire hordes so the flame staff will basically kill everything and anything up to a crusher it will kill a crusher but not quite as effectively as it did before all of the patches as you can see the damage tick down isn't amazing but with that kinetic flare in there you can get some guaranteed damage on it if that's all that's mixed in be warned though kinetic flare does not um prioritize any targets anymore it just hits whatever it hits so you cannot always guarantee that is going to be your beast killer within a horde but it's a build i've been having a lot of fun with all right we should have a quick look at the next one now this one is a very sketchy build it works incredibly well but it is also very dangerous. You are a glass cannon with this build. Even more so than usual. So we'll start off we take all of this. We're not taking metal or soul stealer. We're dumping basically all of the defensive stuff we don't desperately need. But we are taking wildfire and perilous combustion again. Brain rupture and kinetic flare. We're not picking up kinetic resonance. Down into prescience for the extra crit. Empathic Evasion, Scryer's Gaze, a ability you don't often see me using, Reality Anchor, taking Warp Rider, and then all the way down here into Warp Siphon, and we're picking up all of these lovely, lovely abilities to give us more damage. So, 
this build, you do have to be careful. So you press the scryer's gaze, and the damage just starts rolling in. But you have to remember you don't have venting shriek anymore to get rid of your perils, so just be very careful and watch what you're doing. See, like that. I looked away for a second, wasn't paying attention, and exploded. This build is quite dangerous if you're not used to playing the Psyker. But it is quite a fun build. It make it it's it's a bit different from the norm. And if you fancy a bit of a challenge or just something different, I do highly recommend it. It is quite fun. And with these builds, I am using the same thing basically across everything. The only thing that's changing is the staff and the talents. Everything else is pretty much the same. But yeah, there you go. That is the, the Psyker's Compendium for now. Uh, a bit smaller than the other ones. As I said, there's only three builds out of the five that I'm, I confidently use all the time. Two of the builds are mostly tester builds. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope this has been helpful, folks. If it has, please like, subscribe, ring that little bell for notifications. It really does help us out. And uh, if you fancy it, check out the membership where you get lovely, lovely emojis, a private members Discord where you can chat with us whenever you want, and prize draws every month. So thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you later.